70. Yeah. 71, I saw it for a second. <laughs> What's going on everyone back with another episode of stuff and things and today we have added some new performance mods to the 2022 Honda Grom. A few weeks back a company known as DH Motoring reached out to me and if you guys are in the Grom world then there's a really good chance that you heard of them. They sell a ton of different upgrades mainly on the performance side for all sorts of Groms and they sent out a care package so huge thank you to DHM for getting me these parts that way I was able to work on the Grom just a little bit more. We've got a beautiful 70 degree day here in Colorado so figured might as well take the Grom out and break in all these new parts. So what did we do? This whole process started about two nights ago and I was out in the garage and completely ripped apart the Grom to install three new items from DHM. The first thing was a new camshaft. Now I was planning on making an instructional video on how to actually do this, but there are some great ones out there on the internet already. All you have to do is search Grom cam install. So here's a quick overview. I started by pulling apart the engine. There are two view covers, one that covers the part where you can actually crank the motor over and then a little viewing window. That way you can get the bike at top dead center once you're all complete with everything. I also pulled the camshaft cover and the valve covers. From there, I loosened the sprocket that is connected to the actual camshaft. I pulled that sprocket off of the chain and just set that loosely down in the engine, making sure that I wasn't gonna lose that thing. You then have to hold the motor steady with one of those first viewpoints that you opened up, and then you can loosen another bolt which keeps the cam in place. From there, I backed out the valves pretty much as far as they could go, and the camshaft just sort of slides right out. Out. And then you just repeat that process. New camshaft goes in. It does help to sort of pull back on the valves just a little bit. That way you're not binding up on anything inside of there. Once I got that new cam seated, I was able to then put everything kind of back in place, just repeating that process until it got to the point of getting that top dead center. This was probably the hardest part of the entire process. One tip that I can give you guys is that you should probably mark the actual sprocket that connects to the camshaft and the chain that goes onto that sprocket. The sprocket itself has a little notch that you have to put onto the camshaft and it's just a little bit finicky. It took me a while to figure out how to actually get it in there, but once I got it in, everything was running smooth. The first time I got it in, it was not at top dead center. I was off by one sprocket tooth, so then I had to pull the whole thing back off, put it back together, and eventually I got it. After that, you check your valves. DHM recommends 0 .005 for the spacing. I just got some feeler gauges, bent them a little bit because it's really tight in there when you're trying to get into those valve covers. So I was able to get the proper spacing and get everything back together. I changed the oil. I also ripped out the stock air box on the Grom and threw on the Chimera intake, which I'll give you guys a close up of here in a little bit. And then DHM also sent out a brand new ECU, which takes into account all of the performance changes of the Grom. So as of right now, I have the Zoom exhaust, the Chimera intake, and of course now the DHM camshaft. Even if you're not super experienced at wrenching on motorcycles, I would say that it was probably like easy to medium difficulty. There is a little bit of finicky parts there when you're adjusting the valves. But for the most part, it wasn't too bad. I think now that I know how to do it, I could probably do that whole thing in roughly an hour. So with that being said, I'm out right now doing a little break and making sure everything is seated in there properly. The bike already sounds way different. A combination of probably the cam and the intake, which is down here on my right hand side. I may have to go back and watch some of my older Grom videos to see what it sounded like when it was more stock, but it definitely sounds a lot different from my perspective anyway. Not sure if it translates onto camera. So right now I'm headed over to my friend Will's house. He also has a 22 Honda Grom and his is stock when it comes to the performance side of things. Yeah, it really hasn't changed a whole lot and I haven't either before this. Both of the bikes are set up very similar. 
He has the Kenda Big Block tires, which I'm running on here. So I'm gonna head over there, we're gonna go out for a little ride, and then we're gonna see if I can tell a performance difference between all of the mods that I've added to the 22 Grom versus a stock Grom. All right, guys, here we go. Battle of the Groms, both 22. This one with some performance mods. This one, pretty stock. Did you do anything to this? <laughs> so it's Halloween weekend and Will's wearing a Grinch onesie. He's gonna get mic'd up too, so hopefully I'll be able to grab his audio from that. Okay, so he does have the zoom exhaust. We're running the exact same exhaust, but he doesn't have a tune and everything else. So back to my Grom. What I've done from DH Motoring was well, I already had the exhaust from Zoom. Here is the Chimera intake. All I had to do was basically pull the stock airbox, which leaves this giant void in here. It's not like a ton of weight saving because the stock airbox is pretty light, but opens all this up and then you just get a little tube. And then I pulled the little sensor from the stock airbox, threw it on here, k and filter on there. If I come around to the other side, there is a little tube. You're not even going to be able to see it on camera, but whatever. Chimera intake, you guys get it. These are the viewing points that I just showed you. The cam cover, the valve covers. I had all that stuff ripped off. Threw the new cam in there. Got the timing set through the timing hole right here. Adjusted the valves. And then right behind this cover is where you find the ECU. DH motoring. Sent out an ECU. Fit for the exhaust, the cam, the intake. And I'm running 91 pump gas. You running 91 pump gas? Yup. All right, so without further ado, we're gonna go out for a little bit of a ride and see how these things compare to each other. <laughs> That'll do. Is that gay enough? <laughs> I think so. All right, here we go. Actually, let's do an idle comparison. So you're just idling right now. Find neutral on a Grom. It's like winning the lottery. So they sound very similar. I definitely notice a little bit more intake noise on mine because of the Chimera. And once we get going, this bike is much louder than it used to be. Follow you, I don't know where we're going. I don't either, man. Bramp, bramp. Whoop. These kind of big blocks are awesome, though. I was skeptical at first, but they're pretty freaking sweet. Yeah. Takes some getting used to on the road for sure, but Groms are better off road anyway. Agreed. Turn around, don't even look at us, don't worry about it. We're just tiny, tiny little Groms. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. So, Talon did not inform me that we're going to be riding Groms today, did you, Talon? <laughs> no. I came to your office and I was like, oh, I need to film that Grom video. And then Will shows up on his 890. I'm like, bro. We gotta ride Groms. Thought we were riding big bikes and was uh, pretty devastated by it because obviously Talents is gonna be faster, which we should find out here shortly. Well, Will is chalking up riding a Grom as a waste of a good motorcycle day, and I disagree completely. This is I, great. So what we talked about on the way over, which I think is accurate, is this is definitely well suited for city, and the times that we've gone downtown, I thoroughly enjoy riding it. But most of the roads around where I live out here are you know, 45, 50 miles an hour, and that is not where the Grom excel. No, definitely not. But that's why we're trying to get out of the suburbs or going to like an industrial park area. Here, this can be the first test. From a line up a hill. Um, all right, the light's about to turn. Box the launch, it doesn't count. Oh, this is so fun, dude. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm not on a 2K90. See, it, it doesn't feel fast because it's a Grom, but I guess it is quite a bit faster. I bought to launch, we'll have to do that again, but I, I, it definitely is faster. Okay. So with this new cam install, that's the main thing that's giving me the performance along with the ECU, but it should be giving me better top end, which I already noticed. The bike revs higher, I find myself riding it, revving it a little bit higher. And again, it's still brand new, so once it kind of settles in a little bit more, I think it's gonna be feeling pretty solid. Right when I started it up, after I had everything ripped apart, it did take a little bit uh, sputtering and whatnot until it kind of adjusted to all the new parts, but the ECU picked it up after about maybe 10, 15 miles, and now it's feeling pretty good. 
Yeah, when I rode that for your Suron video, I think it's a, a night and day difference. How many miles do you have on that? 663. Okay, so we're about the same. I've got 760. Yeah. That's another thing to know. So Will has, his Grom was originally yellow. Mine was originally black. They came off the production line probably like a month or two apart until they hit the States. And I believe that any Grom off the production line is going to change the way that it feels. Both of these bikes honestly feel drastically different. Like even when this was in its completely stock form. Yeah, I, I think yours is overall just tighter. It feels better built. It's weird though, cause like, it, it's, for someone who doesn't ride motorcycles, they probably wouldn't be able to tell, but you and I both, like when we were switching bikes, it was very noticeable. I will say that sounds way better. It's definitely louder, right? Yeah. And it's like, I definitely notice after about 6,000 RPMs now, like right here where I'm cruising, it feels like there's more power than previously. Again, super hard to tell because we're talking about like a horsepower or two on like a... 10 horsepower. So yeah. That's like 10% increase, which is huge. On a good day, 10, 10 horsepower, yeah. yeah. So right there was 10,000 RPMs, which I believe Will's bike is limited at what, like 94, 95? Yeah, I think 95. And how much usable power are you getting up there? Not a whole lot. Yeah, zero. <laughs> but also, uh, with these mods, you're making more power all the way up through that top end. So, I think it'll be very apparent when we find a place to pull from the line or also have like a rolling start. It's the only drag race that you can't get arrested for. Yeah, because we're barely going 60. Yeah, because you won't hit the speed limit. So, I'm fifth gear right now, throttle pegged. Cruising. Yeah, same here. See ya. <laughs> 65, 64. Hang a left. I bet if we find a good spot, uh, I bet the top speed of this actually increased as hang, well. Hang a left. Come on, dog. Might be able to stop right here. Let's yeah, let's go up that. Too. If there's no one behind, oh, you mean on the dirt? Yeah, yeah. We'll do that. Nice little detour. Yeah. Grom is not gonna make it up that big drop right there. Oh, did he? Yeah. No love for me, I should say. He was probably confused. He's like, what is that dude wearing? <laughs> Grinch this suit. Is Alpine Stars, believe it or not, dude. Alpine Star Grinch suit. It's yeah. nice. Wear that to a track day. Yeah. This ain't very far, but we'll see. This will be just off the line. All right, do you want to call it? Uh, it's so bogged down. There, I hit the rev limiter. Alright, so definitely once I get into like the 6,000 plus RPMs, I feel it. Maybe we can do it right here again if there's no cars. Yeah, let's try it. Three, two, one, go. hard to tell off the line but once you uh, get moving like definitely if we were going from a roll you'd be able to tell I'm at 5,000 rpms ready three two one yeah a little bit
so there's definitely a difference but that's why i wanted will to come out with his bike because again when you're adding like a horsepower maybe two i don't know how much it actually is you're not going to notice that much of a difference on such a small bike as opposed to like we upgrade our big bikes and then you really notice a difference you get a tune on a leader bike and you're doing 190 to the wheel and you're just like instantly noticeable i love being able to rev it out so high now <laughs> i mean it's loud might have to wear earplugs but I'm glad I didn't go with a louder exhaust like I originally was planning because this thing would just be screaming everywhere. <laughs> well, other than that, the cam and the tune, the intake, definitely more noticeable. It's uh, getting all the restrictions out of there. The bike is just, it's running really great right now don't have anything bad to say about it yet and once i start riding this thing more i'll definitely fill you guys in on how everything's doing oh you dick you got me hey i can catch up now <laughs> i'm coming So that's it for the real world testing. Like this definitely adds more power, but Will's probably gonna now 300 swap his Grom or something crazy. I mean, you got all winter to do it. So if we go on a Sunday scoot ride on the Groms and you pull that thing out in the spring and it has a 300 in it, I'm gonna have to reassess my Grom build at that point. So before I wrap this video up, again, huge thank you to DHM for getting me these parts and let me test them out i'll leave a link for them in the description down below i do want to do one top speed run quick so we're going to try to find a place to do that and then we'll call it good all right we got another burner off the line here whenever the light turns green i can't even see these lights So new top speed on the Grom, 71 miles per hour. Dope. Well, that just made this thing a little bit more fun. Uh, anything to add? I think these kits go for like 170 bucks online. So yeah, easy to do. So again, I'll leave a link for that in the description down below. If you guys have any questions on the install and stuff like that, also let me know. Again, there's a lot of good videos out there, but uh, I did do it myself and I can walk you through if you have any questions. Uh, that's it. Thanks again to DHM and that's all for today. If you're new here, consider clicking subscribe. Make new videos every week. As always, thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next one.